D Dan, yours is a, uh, I think the subtitle is, calls it an extraordinary uh, campaign. Uh, it's an extraordinary book as well. And it really is one that tells a story that is uh, so thrilling, even for all of us who have uh, lived through it over the past few years. Uh, as I said, you've been covering for presidential campaigns for three decades now. Why was this the race you decided to start writing your first book about presidential campaigns? Well, I mean, when Haynes Johnson and I first got together to talk about this, he called me in early February of 2007, and he said, I've got an idea I want to talk to you about. And we agreed we'd have breakfast the next morning, and I went home that night, and I said to my wife, Nancy, who's here in the audience, I said, Haynes called today, wants to have breakfast, and he's got an idea he wants to talk about. And she said, well, if it's a book idea, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> she knew that Haynes had written 14 books, and I had written one. Uh, but we sat down that morning, and it was remarkable, because he outlined, in his mind, uh, the concept for a book that he thought we ought to do for the 2008 campaign. And I f said to him, Haynes, I'm two-thirds of the way through a book proposal for a book that is almost identical to the book you're talking about. And here's what we both thought at that point, that we were at a pivot point in the history of the United States, that this was going to be a very big election. We didn't know how it was going to come out. We didn't know at that point who would, the nominees were going to be. But we knew that after eight years of the Bush administration and after the tumult of the end of the Clinton administration, that this was a deeply unhappy country, that the war in Iraq had split the country, that we were at a point in our sort of economic history where the impact of globalization was causing anxiety. We did not know, obviously, at that point how bad the economy was going to become. Um, we felt that this was likely to be a cast of characters unlike any we had seen in many elections. Haynes goes back to the 50s in terms of covering presidential politics. I started in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, we just felt that this was going to be a significant election and a potential turning point in the history of the country. And it was our feeling that it was a campaign that no matter what happened, deserved a book at the end of it. Now, we knew that this was a campaign that was going to be covered as closely as any campaign had ever been, and not just day by day or hour by hour, but literally minute by minute, uh, given the, the role of new media. Um, but our sense was that this was also a campaign worthy of the history books, and what we wanted to do was write a good narrative history of it. You know, that's a really interesting point to leave on, because uh, your book is part of a long tradition of presidential campaign books going back to uh, Teddy White's Making the President in 1960 and Joe McGinnis and uh, Jack Germond, Jules Whitcover, uh, Richard Ben Kramer. I mean, there's been a great uh, tradition of these kinds of books. Uh, in, I think, 2006, or early 2007, Matt Bai from the New York Times Magazine uh, wrote a piece basically saying that this genre was dead, right. uh, that you just couldn't write these kinds of books anymore in an era that was, as you said, being covered obsessively by 24-hour cable news or blogs uh, that really had much more guarded candidates and, and campaigns. Clearly, your book is, as you said, a counterpoint to that. What were the challenges, though, of writing this kind of book that is going to be one for the history books, but also one that's being written soon after the election uh, in this kind of era? Well, I mean, it's, it's a great question, because I mean, the first challenge is to find a publisher willing to buy the book, uh, because for, for a number of years, this genre went out of favor with publishers for exactly the reason you're, you're suggesting, which is that by the time you got to the end of a campaign, people felt they knew everything there was to know about it. And in many ways, they did know everything they really needed to know about it. Um, and so for a while, publishers were very gun shy. I know I approached a, a agent in an earlier campaign cycle with the idea of doing one, and his view was almost impossible, if not impossible, to sell. Um, and so that was our first challenge. And, and certainly in the proposal that we put together, we tried to stress, for the reasons I had just outlined, why we thought this was different, why we thought this was a different campaign. The challenge, once we got Viking to buy the book, um, and, and incidentally, they were a fantastic publisher to deal with throughout this, but the challenge once we were sitting down to write was, okay, how do you tell people a story that they think they already know? And um, so the, we did a couple of things that we think 
were the keys to that. One was that um, we did a lot of interviews for this book along the way to try to have a contemporaneous account of events um, so that everything we did was not simply after the fact. So that Because it's easy for people in the middle of a campaign or, or at the end of it to, to revise history. And what you wanted to do was to get people's impressions as you were going through. And, and a lot of the interviews that I conducted with campaign people uh, were done with the understanding that that material would not appear until the book came out. They were basically embargoed for the book. I was, I was doing daily journalism for the Washington Post, but the Post was good enough to let me do this on that basis. Um, the, the, the second was to pull the campaign apart at the end of it and put it back together in ways that would create or recreate a sense of suspense in a drama in which everybody does know the ending. And so part of that is with fresh material that we were able to unearth. And part of that was um, in the writing process. We, we, have, we have a fabulous editor on this book, Jim Silberman, who's the imprint on the book. And Jim said to us at one point as we were putting the book together in outline form, uh, and had ideas on a digression into this topic or a digression into that topic. He said, just remember, with this story, never get very far away from the narrative. The narrative will drive the, this book and will keep people, if you do it right, will keep people engaged even though they know um, how it turned out. The third thing we did was we did not want this book simply to be an inside story of the campaign. I mean, uh, our, our view is, while that's interesting, it's interesting to a more limited audience, the kind of who struck John inside every campaign. And though that's part of this book, our sense was we wanted to be able to, to set this campaign against the backdrop of where the country was in 2007 and 2008. It, it's always been my view that presidential campaigns are not simply about the candidates. Uh, they are about the country at any particular moment. They are a snapshot on where we are collectively as a country. And Haynes, over his career, has always been a master at drawing a, a, a portrait of where America is at any given time. And so uh, we wanted to build in voters. We wanted to build in um, the sort of some of the broader issues. This is not an issue-driven book by any means, but we wanted to bring in the context of those issues. So it was, it was in all of those ways that we tried to take a story that everybody knew and tell it fresh. Talk for a bit about the actual physical process of writing this book. I ran into you, I think, in Philadelphia at the last of the Democratic presidential debates, <laughs> which was, uh, I think, in April of 2008. And uh, we had a brief conversation. And what you were saying then was uh, you had thought that the primaries would have been over for a long time, and you would have had some time in between the primaries and the general election to actually do a lot of the work of the book. And I think there's a lot of people who were surprised that the primaries had, had gone on uh, as long. The two candidates including in particular. A, <laughs> including right. Barack Obama and, <laughs> and Hillary Clinton. But how did the actual process of writing the book work as you were both doing your daily reporting and working on this? How did you stop one from coloring the other? And did they color each other? And how did your collaboration work with, uh, with Haynes Johnson? Well, our, as you suggest, our, our sense was, given the history of past campaigns, that, that we would have a very active opening few months in early 2007 and then it would slow to a different pace and that we would be able to do a certain amount of book reporting in that period and even perhaps some writing and then as we got into the fall of 2007 and from there until probably late February or mid-February we would be in an intensive period of, of action uh, and that after that beginning in March or April we would have some months until the summer to actually begin to write the sections about the two nomination battles, uh, how wrong we were, um, but in many ways how fortunate we were because the story, the story got better. Somebody said of this campaign that this, this was a marathon run at the pace of a sprint, and I, I think that is a great description of it because my first outing for this campaign was in late November 2006 for the announcement of the long-forgotten campaign of Tom Vilsack, then the outgoing governor of Iowa and now the Secretary of Agriculture. Um, and it did not let up until the campaign was over. We did a little bit of writing um, in 2008, in the summer of 2008. Um, but not nearly as much as we had hoped. We got some of what is now the opening section 
done. But um, in that sense, we were way behind our deadline. <laughs>